Here's the scene, the Russell Museum at MGH. It's Hub Week. We have six scientists. They're going to tell their stories about their science to an audience and get feedback from judges. Can they communicate their science? You be the judge. Check out the video of our winner. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today at Hub Week for Rise of the Machines to tell you about some of the work we've been doing at McClay Hospital over the last few years uh, that really sort of starts with this question of what makes humans so much more fun to talk to than computers? You know, I, I don't know if you ever stopped to think about this, but I'm sort of obsessed with this idea because, you know, uh, back when I was going to the Museum of Science when I was in Boston growing up and heard about Eliza, this first computer program that, you know, you could interact with, uh, I learned how to, like, program in basic to kind of do a basic little, you know, Eliza, that would, if you said like the word father, it would ask you, like, tell me about your father, you know. But it was kind of like this. It wasn't that satisfying, and I kind of lost interest and moved on to other things. Went on to medical school, went to become a psychiatrist, become a neuroscientist, to try to see if, you know, we could begin to, you know, make more sense of this human-human interaction that is uh, such a kind of key to what we are as humans. Uh, and, you know, I spent years uh, trying to think about how we would use this really, you know, not just to kind of have cool computer programs, but to, if we could harness that, if we could, you know, start to really understand what it is about certain humans that makes them even better than other humans at this, you know, psychiatrists, psychologists, people who do this for a living, journalists, you know, who learn to pick up on really subtle behavioral cues, speech patterns, and actually use this information to make diagnoses, depression, bipolar disorder, things that, you know, have huge impact for, you know, us as a society, and so I went off, you know, to, to graduate school to try to study these things, but it wasn't popular to study behavior and kind of the nuances that was being done in marketing and other places. Uh, so we wanted, uh, after I was, you know, trained, we studied lots of patients using, you know, brain scanning and genetics, and we scanned thousands of people, uh, you know, using these standard methods, uh, and then we sort of stepped back to look at how, what kind of progress this was making, and we ended up with, with graphs like this, which <laughs> are complex, you know, I'll, I'll walk you through for just one second. We studied, uh, you know, people with all kinds of conditions, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, you know, really severe mental illnesses, and here I'm showing you each person in our study got compared to each other based on how similar they looked in terms of their symptoms. These are the clinical ratings, we asked them lots of questions, spent hours and hours doing this, uh, and, you know, when you start to do this, you, you can maybe pick out a cloud of bipolar patients, maybe, and schizophrenia patients. We just start to get a sense of how complex this is. And, you know, it really just occurred to us at this point, you know, are we going to continue spending millions of dollars, you know, all these people's time and effort, when the biological signal is going to be trying to map onto something this complicated? We realized, you know, maybe it was time to step back and think about how computers might actually help us better capture those subtle behaviors and speech patterns that you know, clinicians are doing every day in their practice. And so we went where any, you know, good scientist goes when they're stumped and they need help from a different discipline, we went to YouTube. Uh, <laughs> and we actually found this great group out at University of Southern California uh, that was building this system called Multisense where they were able to pull out of a video, like a live stream video, all of the things that we thought were really important, like gesture and posture and, you know, speech, and speech tone. Uh, and they were using actually to kind of create a modern day Eliza, which is this thing called Sim Sensei, which personally I found, found a little bit like creepy, like a little uncanny <laughs> valley, but like, <laughs> but you know, they were using it and, and they had good reason to, you know, if we could do this, if we could put these things, you know, into places that were under-resourced, you know, we would have a way to address the huge shortage of mental health specialists. Uh, but, you know, aside from the sort of avatar approach, we thought, hey, this is the thing we're looking for. And so we, uh, over the past uh, couple years, uh, ended up working to kind of get the, uh, the group out at University of Southern California to give us this multi-sense thing. And we've been deploying it at McLean Hospital over the last couple of years in patients that have uh, all these conditions like bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. And, and, uh, and what we're finding is really fascinating, not only do the patients and the providers are really interested in these kinds of approaches, but you know, there's actually a potential uh, to begin measuring these things in, in real clinics and, and for the computers to start even maybe doing better than the clinicians themselves in some cases. So here I'm showing you, you know, these complex plots are sort of like a behavioral EEG of what happens over the course of a hospitalization from someone who's getting better from mania. So this is someone who's hospitalized, they're getting treated. And what we're able to find with these kind of techniques is that, uh, you can't really read the words, but the mania rating, the kind of conventional rating, 
uh, it gets better just in the same kinds of ways that these automatic things are, are, are starting to show, uh, show some help with. So, you know, we're just at the early stages of this, but we feel like this way of kind of using computers to help us learn more about human interactions uh, and eventually be able to use these tools to train people, you know, to be their own mental health clinician or, or to find places in under-resourced parts of the world to use these tools uh, to make things better for everyone. So that'll be uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, and we have a, uh, a meeting coming up in a few weeks where actually one of our judges here will be uh, a panelist and moderator. So uh, <laughs> Tech Insight Summit uh, is the website. So we'd love to see more of you guys there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's up here. Oh, yeah, okay. okay, yeah, you have to get your feet oh, up. Oh, okay. Right? Exactly. Okay, so Ike, do you want to start us off? Sure. Um, so, first, I really enjoyed how you started off with sort of a story about yourself um, as opposed to a story that was just about the science. I thought that made that uh, made um, so the whole presentation more engaging because we're not only interested in your work, but your um, relationship to it. Um, and I guess one piece of feedback or uh, the uh, constructively critical feedback um, that I might give is I, I really like the question you posed at the beginning, which I think was what, make hu hu what makes humans so fun to talk to? Mm -hmm. And then I sort of heard a number of other questions come up later in the presentation that I didn't know if they were, if that question had changed or if they were related to it, like um, why are some humans better than others at communicating, I think? And then um, at the end it seemed like, or maybe not better, but different, and talking about diagnosing mental health conditions, so I didn't know sort of how those questions related to each other, um, and that sort of distracted me a little bit from the really interesting stuff that I'm sure was related to each of those questions. Rich. Uh, first of all, is there a conflict of interest that you're speaking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little worried no. about our judging. Uh, just, just kidding. Just no kidding. remuneration. Um, uh, that was really interesting. Thank you. I, uh, I really liked your energy. Uh, and uh, you know, one of the things I encourage scientists to do is be themselves, but be, but be them be their best selves. Yeah. And you, I mean, I've never met you before, but you seem very natural, uh, very likable. Uh, I liked uh, uh, the humor that you were using throughout, um, the U YouTube joke, and talking about things being a little creepy. Um, one uh, piece of feedback I might give, and just helping uh, have your presentation be a little clear, is some of your images had a, several things happening at once. And I might suggest <coughs> one visual per screen. Um, so, yeah, it's great. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I need to recuse myself. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> moderating a panel. Um, so yeah, I feel like your personal projection is wonderful. It's like, as an audience member, I feel like, woohoo! it's like a psychiatrist and neuroscientist who's totally just a guy, right? <laughs> it's very personally approachable. Um, I, I, uh, I, 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 in your place, I think I would go massively second person. I would, I would. So you started with like, have you ever wondered why some humans? But I think whenever you're talking about mental illness or mental conditions, that encompasses just about everybody. Like, so it's like, have you ever, th you know, when you've been depressed, have you noticed that uh, you speak differently or you relate differently or when you're anxious, do you notice that you? do this or that, and then that helps everybody relate to what you're about to say. And then I have to say that I actually felt a little bit confused about the, the crux of the work that you're presenting. So it seemed to me like what you were saying was, we got, we gave up on the DSM, like you can't, it's too, people have so many different symptoms all over the map that we concluded they were not totally useful and so we should find a, 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 a computerized way to assess symptoms, but I, I came away feeling like still just a little bit confused about what the crux of the work is. Buck Green. <laughs> Buck Green. Yeah. Christine. I, I'm just going to kind of echo my fellow panelists. I think um, loved your enthusiasm. I actually like the fact that your questions are evolving. That gets to that like the true science process is that you start with one question and then you end up with ten, right? You, you don't really end up with one answer. And so I think if you capitalize a little bit more on that and made that more explicit because it's not something that's always known um, would make it really strong. Um, so that's the only thing I would add. Um, great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.